just came here and you just, you know, you smelled this air, it was clean, it was just, besides being a beautiful place, it was just fabulous. I have two particular weaknesses, fabrics and books. I love to read. I always have my own reading material on the go. I've just always been that way. I love to be in a library and just be surrounded by books. That's my thing. Before this happened, we were house building, going up on the mountain hunting, getting firewood, active. I mean, Brian, I was his tag along. Like, he took me everywhere. <laughs> I was his sidekick, I used to say. Uh, we did a lot of these things together. However, Stan's property borders the Eagle River, and he has observed an increasing number of grizzly bears on the property. Yeah, that's all, folks. You old? Are you a matey? <laughs> yeah, well, you must be my grandson then. I've taken on myself with his scheduling his care workers, which falls in my domain, and there's a little bit of paperwork involved with that. And for me to be looking after that and organizing that gives me the feeling that I have a sort of a managerial type job. Like I have something that I can put my hands on and say, this is mine. Like this is what I do. Yeah, I'll only be a couple minutes. <laughs> You're a ham. <laughs> Hello there. Hi, Gwen. Yes. Mike, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wow, you've got some, nice some awesome trophies. decoration yeah. here. <laughs> That's awesome. That's for sure. All right, well, you ready to make your story? Yes, I am. All right. Oh, heavens, this would have been... I have to go by how short Brian's hair yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say this was probably six years ago, seven? Six years, okay. Oh, cool. And this in the rehab center again in yeah. Alberta. The way that works is we'll write a story together, we'll record right. the voiceover, we'll put right. that into the computer, and then we'll uh, scan all of your photos and images and things that you want to use. We'll put that all together okay. to make the little three minute movie. Okay, that sounds yeah. good. Always sleepy. Sleepy, like, like a, a bear. bear. <laughs> hibernating. Never naughty like a puppy. Oh, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Always naughty, yeah. Yeah, always naughty. I really love the idea of, you know, the big a poet, yeah, fear. poem about fear, right? Because that's what it, you're feeling in those moments, right? So now that you've you've seen it, yes. Uh, how do you feel about showing it to, to people? It's, when you're in a caregiver position, it's harder to look into yourself, at yourself. Mm -hmm. What? Long time no see. I know. It's almost as bad as when you lived right next door. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. I haven't got your hair cut yet, Mike. Yeah. Hi, Mike. I'm Joan. Joan, nice to meet you. Hi, yeah, Joan. Nice to cool. meet you. Thanks for coming. She's a movie star. Yeah, you're the movie star. She's a Gwen. And Gwen. 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 Gwen's the movie star. Oh, yeah. Yes, she is. Yes. <laughs> Great. So, I mean, as, you know, as neighbors, as caregivers, co-caregivers with Gwen for Brian, you know, and, um, you know, uh, family, uh, daughter and, and uh, grandson, you know, I think you guys are all very much connected to this story. And so we're really uh, excited to sort of hear what you have to say about it. And then after we watch it, we'll get a chance to sort of talk about um, just the, you know, just what it means to be a caregiver. Even you, if you want to share something too, you can. Share it already. I loved books. Dickens, Dumas, Deaver. You can travel the world, feel emotion, excitement, learn about others' lives, and through them learn more about yourself. My husband Brian was never into books like I was. He was an avid hunter, fisherman, and an outdoorsman. But all that changed the night Brian's heart stopped. It took the paramedics more than 20 minutes to get it beating again, and during this time his brain was without oxygen. The result was a severe brain injury at 55 years old. He wasn't expected to survive, but 12 days later, as I sat next to him in his hospital room, 
he opened his eyes and started asking me about the dog in the house. I knew that the road ahead would be hard, but I had no idea that it would take two years and countless hours of therapy and medical appointments for Brian to come home without his vision nor the use of his hands and arms. Reading and books no longer played a part in my daily life. With all the necessities of daily routine, there was no time for anything which was not essential. About six years later, at a brain injury support group, we learned about a creative writing course at our local college. I remember Brian's face light up as he realized that the course was a possibility for him. He had never been interested in anything like that before, but a few weeks later he was registered. I was anxious as I dropped Brian and the care worker off at the college for that first class. It was the first time in eight years that I wouldn't be there. He had asked if I wanted to come, but something inside told me he needed to do it without me. In all stories, the characters grow and change through the conflicts they face, and so have Brian and I. Every evening we sit together and listen to audiobooks. One of our favorites is the Lincoln Rhyme series by Jeffrey Deaver. The protagonist is a quadriplegic forensic scientist who solves crimes in New York City. Reading and books are now back in my life in more ways than before. With the audiobooks and Brian's story writing, our story continues to be written. Win story, always, everybody. Naughty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was good, eh? Yeah, it was good. It was great. It was, it was great. great. And just, you know, Gwen is such an example of you just, you don't stop, you never <laughs> give up, and you just keep putting one foot before the other. And I was thinking watching that. <laughs> yeah, and just, you know, that's a long road. I think about that very much. Mm. But I remember when Brian woke up from his coma and, you know, they looked at my mom like, I, I would never wish this on anybody because now you're going to have to make all these really hard decisions. And I feel like that was the beginning of two years of my mom fighting to be heard also because she wanted to be understood that it wasn't an option for Brian to be put in care. The option was for him to come home and she would do anything that she had to do to make that happen. I knew that his mind was working, like he was, he had memory, he had, everything was there. And it's very hard to convince somebody else that when they see a man who's super agitated, really can't speak, nobody realizes he doesn't actually see. <laughs> and they're, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to plead my case when no one gets it. <laughs> it was yeah. really difficult. I used to do Brian's muscle stim, his stretches, his uh, whatever, and, and I've given some of those things up completely and handed them delegated to the care workers. I had to at some point step out of being the therapist and just be Brian's wife. It's time for Brian and I just to be, just to be a married. husband and wife. Yeah. I think having to put him away, essentially locked inside himself, would have that would have killed my mom too. Like we would have lost two people. You guys all obviously have a lot of experience, you know, as caregivers in this situation. So if there was sort of one thing that you would want to pass on to other people who you are... Love them to death. Love them to death. Yeah. <laughs> love them back to death. life. Love them back to life. Love them back to life. I guess I'll, I guess that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it? That's it? Pretty? Yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. <laughs> We adapt and we learn. We learn what to appreciate, what to be grateful for, what's important, more important, what is less important. I enjoy what I do to help Brian where we are now. <laughs>